Don't worry, Mari. Why don't you lift up your voices? Come on, come on, lift up your voices. Let the Lord is mighty. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we love you today. For all that you are to us, all that you've done for us, all that you are going to do through us in this moment. We pray now, God, that the hearers of your word will hear God such a word, God, that will convict us and compel us and push us to do thy will. Father, use the preacher. God is an instrument of your will. God, none of me, but all of thee. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Grab your Bibles really quickly. Let's go to the word of the Lord to hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Go with me to the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. I want to read a familiar passage of scripture, very short passage of scripture out of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. As you find in that, look at your name and say, I came for a word. I came for a word. I came for a word. I didn't come just to look at you. I came for a word. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You keep on your outfit nice, but I'm looking for a word. If I don't hear from the Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. First Samuel chapter 16. Amen. Verses 6 and 7. When you have it, you can say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when they were come, that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because... I have refused him. For the Lord seeth, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh at the, or on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Read it again, read it again. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely. The Lord's anointed is before him. This has to be the one. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. Don't look, glory to God, at how he looks or on the height of his stature. Don't even look at how tall he is because I, the Lord, have refused him. I don't have this position for him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God looks at the heart. Come on, look at somebody else and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, God looks at the heart. Can we give God praise right there? God looks, God looks at the heart. You may be seated in his presence. God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart. Last week, last week, the Lord, uh, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we were able, we were able to minister about the mercies of God. We were able to minister about the mercies of God and then we were able to talk about and then why God extended his mercy toward man. And then God and, and, and the truth of the matter is God extended his mercy toward man because man was a sinful entity. Humanity is sinful, men are sinful, amen. And this sin, amen, uh, it traces back to the Garden of Eden. Somebody say amen there. Amen. amen, amen. We discussed, amen, that in the Garden of Eden, man's initial sin, the original sin of man came into being in the Garden of Eden. God, uh, God, God, was, God was able to show us last week that man's initial sin, amen, glory to God, was disobedience. 
Come on, somebody say amen there. Amen. 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 We talked about, we talked about briefly in last Sunday's lesson, amen, amen, that sin, amen, uh, the sin of disobedience is reviewed as witchcraft. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, when you are disobedient, the Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft, amen. Glory to God. Yes, yes, the failure or refusal to obey God is like a bewitching behavior. In other words, in other words, when man, catch this, when man ate of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, they practiced sorcery. Uh, y'all can y'all walk with me? Uh, uh, they, 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 they were practicing divination. Y'all gonna talk to me? Yeah, yeah, the eating of the fruit was as if they practiced voodoo. Y'all not talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The eating of the fruit was as if they practiced roots. Talk to me, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The eating of the fruit, the rebellion, the disobedience was as if they practiced black magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah they walked in a spirit of witchcraft, come on, because they were disobedient. They rebelled against God's order. Yeah, they rejected the law of God. They rejected the standard of God. They were disobedient. Somebody say amen there. And so disobedience, the action of failure or refusal to obey God's law, God's will, God's standard was man's initial sin. The fruit was not the problem. Talk to me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would even venture to say that eating the fruit was not the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fruit was not contaminated. The fruit was not cursed. The fruit did not carry spiritual disease. The fruit was not even moldy. The fruit was just like every other fruit that hung in the garden. The only exception, the only thing that separated this fruit from the other fruit was that God said, don't eat. I wish I had a witness here. The only thing, the only thing, the only thing that separated this fruit from other fruit is that God gave specificity and said, all the trees in the garden, don't you touch this one. Glory to God, because he understood that if you eat of this tree, glory to God, the things that I hid from you to protect you will now become open to your eyes. God, I wish I had a witness here. And so God says, I told you to stay away from this person. Stay away from that person. Stay away from this relationship. Stay out of that relationship. Because there were some things I didn't want you exposed to. He said, because once you got exposed to those things, I'm going to have to work harder for you to do my will. Because those things are going to pull you to do my will. And somebody said, don't touch that fruit. Don't touch, don't touch that fruit. Don't touch that fruit. Don't touch that fruit. The Bible never gave us, the Bible never gave us, glory to God, clear, clear understanding of, glory to God, of what color the fruit was. Yeah. And never told us, glory to God, what kind of fruit that it was. Glory to God, some people, even writers, even illustrators, say that it was an apple. Mm -hmm. But my Bible says it was fruit. Somebody said it was an orange, but the Bible said that it was fruit. So somebody even said that it was a pomegranate, but the Bible says it was fruit. So today I'm going to stick with what the Bible says and tell you that it was fruit. And I'm so glad that it was fruit because now it makes sense when he said you're known by the fruit. That's a good God, you know, you know by the things that's hanging off your tree. He said, if you ain't got nothing hanging off your tree, he said, that's why I curse the fig tree because I came to the fig tree to get something from the fig tree, but the fig tree didn't have anything. Lord God, what are you talking about, preacher? The fig tree was a symbol of the church. He said, I've come by the church several times, but I don't see no fruit. When I see this little stabbing folk in the back, he said, and that's not the fruit. Oh, 
I had a church here. Right. He says to them, of all the trees in the garden, he said, I don't want you to touch the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said, because the day that you do, you shall surely die. Somebody say, you're going to die, you're going to die. You're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. But the serpent, the serpent looked at the woman and said, no, player, you ain't going to die, but you're just going to be just like God. The problem with this is, we will never be just like God. Glory to God. Glory to God. What he didn't understand, hallelujah, is that their initial sin, disobedience, was going to create a separation in the fellowship with God. Yeah, that's why God tells us not to sin. He said, because when you sin, you give me an eviction notice out of your heart. God said, you put me out when you put sin in. Ah, I wish I had a witness to help me. He said, when you don't do what I told you to do, when you don't walk according to my ways, he said, you kick me out and you take upon your own self and you take upon self-righteousness and you say things like this, God knows. I wish I had a church the only difference the only difference in the fruit that hung according to the scripture was that God said don't eat it and man and woman's choice to eat thereof displayed a level of disobedience catch this and inherently they brought sin into the world yeah, yeah, some people want to blame Adam, some people want to blame Eve, but the last time I checked, both of them, ain't. Amen. <laughs> yeah, because, because, because Adam wanted to say, well, the woman, she was the one that had it in her hand. But God said, I didn't tell you you could hold it, I told you you could eat it. He said, he said, so no matter who held it, no matter who got it first, no matter who, who was tricked, I told you, don't eat it. I wish I had a church to help me. And so, and so, and so, glory to God, from that time to this time, man has continually been disobedient to the call and commands of God. And disobedience created a separation between God and man. Sin divides man from God. Rebellion breaks the fellowship with God. Hence why man realized now that they were naked. Because when they were disobedient and did not do what God told them to do, they realized that the covering of God had now been lifted off of them, and now they were a naked people before a holy God. He realized, he realized, glory to God, that God no longer covered him. So what did he do? He went to the nearest bush. See, see, that's what people do. When they get out of the ark of safety, they try to get to the nearest bush. They try to find friends that know that. They try to find a pastor. I done messed up. Can you pray for me, Pastor? I done did this. Can you get me out of it? Can you write a letter to the judge to get me out of this trouble? Come on, come on. They're trying to find the nearest bush. But the thing about it is, God said, I didn't tell you you were naked. I didn't tell you you were unclothed. You must have did something you ain't had no business to. This is why, this is why on the cross, Jesus said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because Christ on the cross was covered in sin. And not even a, not even his own daddy could reach and save him from the penalty of death because the wages of sin, yes. the soul that sins will surely die. If you commit sin, you got to leave here. Glory to God. And so God said, sin stinks at my nostril. God the Father said, I don't even know what sin is. I don't even know what disobedience is. I don't even know what doing wrong is. I'm a holy God. Glory to God. But Jesus said, I know you don't know. That's why you sent me. That's why I had to come down to 42 generations. That's why I had to take on the, 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 the form of a human habit to know what sin was like so that I could so that I could close the gap of separation so that I could reconcile man back to God so that I could bring God to man and man to God I wish I had a church in here that could take 30 seconds and give God praise for being reconciled thank you for bringing it back thank you for snatching it out thank you for renewing my relationship and so, sin creates a 
created a lie. Sin created a gulf. Sin created a gap between God and man. Somebody say amen there. And because of this gap, let me tell you what man, I'm not lost, I'm going somewhere. Let me tell you what man did. Man put all of these systems in place because of the divide between God and man. Man said we got to put all of these systems in place because we're trying to prove to God that we are worthy of his love. We are worthy of his presence. That's why they were sacrificing. They were trying to prove themselves. They were trying to let God know, God, we, we, we messed up, but 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 take us back. We're, we're worthy now. We, we separate. The problem with that is they were doing things in the flesh, but they did not do it in the God said, God said, your actions say one thing, but your heart says another. He said, he said, he said, you're sacrificing. You're, 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 you're taking lambs and bulls and rams and goats. Glory to God. He said you're even circumcising your flesh. You're even cutting off the foreskin of your flesh. He said well, what I want you to do now is cut off the foreskin of your heart. He said you should get your heart together. Because the truth of the matter is this. Catch this. If you don't get nothing else, catch this. God says, he said, I look at your heart. He said, so when you see somebody and they act raggedy, somebody say raggedy. raggedy. God says, I don't want you to fight them because they're acting raggedy, because their actions are a derivative of their heart. Yeah. And God said, if I can get their heart together, their actions are going to follow. So God says, I'm not looking at when you mess up. I'm looking at your heart. God says, I'm not looking at your habit. I'm looking at your heart. I'm not looking at your struggle. I'm looking at your heart. I'm not looking at your addiction. I'm looking at your God says, God says, I gotta look at your heart. He said, I gotta look at your heart. He said, the cause of the problem is in the church is many of us are performing. God says, our praise is a performance. Our worship is a performance. Our prayers are a performance. Our service and our giving is a performance. And some of y'all are performing the way you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But God said, I want you first to be real in everything that you do. God said, it's time out for playing church. Time out for throwing your rock and hide in your head. God said, I need you to come to me and get yourself together. Come on, somebody say amen. God said, I want you to worship me from your heart. Praise me from your heart. Pray to me from your heart. Sing to me from your heart. Don't preach for dollars. Preach from your heart. Don't lead people around a dark road. Go to God, don't need to get a mega church leave from your heart. God said, don't, don't dance just because. God said, dance from your heart. Don't, don't play instruments just because. Play from your heart. God said, don't serve, glory to God, just so you can get the member of the year award. God said, serve from your heart. God said, don't give just so you can be the biggest tither in the church. Glory to God, God said, I want you to give from your heart. From the heart. Because God says, I'm looking at the heart. I'm looking at the posture of your heart. I'm looking at, at the stance of your heart. God said, your song is good, but where is your heart? Your, your dance, you got a good shuffle, but where is your heart? God said, your worship is good, you sound good, everybody's crying, but where is your heart? God said, I love the way you praise, and I have it, you praise. Glory to God, but are you praising me just to be seen? Are you praising me for the great things that I have done in your life. Where is your heart? Yeah, yeah. The way you preach, where is your heart? God said, I appreciate your willingness to lead, but where is your heart? He said, you're great at playing instruments, you serve well, you give much of your time and your money, but where is your heart? Hallelujah. Catch this, y'all. Catch this. God says it's possible to worship and your heart not be in it. Come on now. He said it's possible to come to church and your heart not be in it. He said it's possible to preach a message 
and your heart not be in. He said it's possible to do all you can and your heart not be in. How do you know your heart not in? Because if you do something for somebody and the first thing you got to do is pick up the phone and tell somebody your heart will be in. I'm looking at your heart. In case it's, God said, I can see your heart. I can see past your emotions. Down into your heart. God said, I can look past all your makeup. Down into your heart. God said, I can look past your eyebrows, beach. God said, I look past your stilettos and your pumps. God said, I look past the car you drive and the house you live in. God said, I can see your heart. God said, how can I see your heart? And I said, I see your heart through my word. He said, your heart doesn't line up with my word. Then I see your heart already. Then stop thinking God is a mystical being. That he has to do something spectacular. Has to come to you in a dream. Has to come to you in a vision. No, God said, you read my word and you realize you raggedy in that area. God said, that's a display of your heart. God said, that's a display of where you are. God said, I can see your heart. God said, I'm not concerned about your outside. I'm concerned about your heart. Because if you did not, if God said, you go where you go because of your heart. You do the things you do because of your heart. You give the way you give because of your heart. That's why I don't beat people up about tithes and offering. Because you ain't going to do right to your heart. Get right. Can I help somebody? Help somebody. God, we got to tell them what God's word says and leave that thing alone. Amen. Lord of God, we can't beat people over the head. Lord of God, with God's word, that is not what God's word was intended for. Lord of God, when the word of God comes out, Lord of God, that's what they pray. Lord, let the word fall on good ground. Because there's a stony piece of all of our heart. And sometimes the word can go and land on that stony heart and it don't produce no fruit. I told y'all I won't lose. I was doing something. You got to understand. God is saying, I'm trying to perfect something in you. I'm trying to bring something out of you. I'm trying to make you who you're supposed to be. But I can't do that if you don't give me your heart. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Let's look at the text. Let's look at the text. Here in the text. And I'm getting ready to go. Here in the text. We find that God is sending Samuel. He tells Samuel in the first part of chapter 16. He said, how long are you going to mourn? How long are you going to cry over Saul? Uh, yeah, See, because yeah. Saul had messed up. Saul had failed from the grace of God. Because Saul, glory to God, Saul, hallelujah, glory to God, Saul, amen, did not do what God told him to do. He was disobedient. Y'all remember what we studied in Bible class? Glory to God. Saul, God told Saul, I want you to kill everything of Amalek. Kill the children, kill Nene, kill Pukit, kill all of them. Because all of them, glory to God, they did what you, they did, they were going to kill you. God said, I want you to kill them before they kill you. And we talk about in Bible study, Lord God, that there are some things in our lives that if we don't kill it, it's going to kill us. Amen. 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 Come on, man. God, I'm going to have time to I'm going to have time. So you got to understand something here. Lord God, he said, I want you to kill everything of Amalek. Saul did not do that. Lord God, but he lied to the man of God. It would have been different had he confessed and repented. But he did not. He looked at Samuel and said, I did everything you told me to do. He said, well, if you did it, what is this cry that I hear? My mama always said, a big dog will always holler. Y'all know what Lord God. And so what I want you to understand today, he did not do it, and it came to the man of God. You can hide from people, but you can't hide from God. Amen, amen, amen. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, what he said to them, glory to God, hallelujah, he said, he said, he said, you did not do it, I'm going to reject you, and I'm going to give your anointing to somebody else. This is why it's so important that you be obedient, because your anointing is on the line. Who 
who God called you to be is on the line. And so he says to him, he said, you didn't do my will. I'm going to reject you and I'm going to give them another king. Not only will I take your anointing, but I'm going to take your title too. I'm going to take your position too. Glory to God. And so he says to him, you cut off. You're no good. I'm done with you. And so that hurts Samuel. Notice, it never bothered Saul, but it hurt the man of God. You know the posture of your leader. Glory to God, when you get in a rut and they have to feel the pain. And so, and so, and so the Bible declares, hallelujah, that Samuel began to cry. Samuel began to mourn. And God said, get up! you crying for. Jesus. He did not do right, but I'm going to allow you, glory to God, to see the newness that I'm about to do. God says, I'm getting ready to do a new thing in their lives. And so what does God do? God looks and he tells him, he said, get your horn wall, go down to Jesse's house. Why I got to go to Jesse's house? Jesse got all them goats. He got all them sons. They like to talk. Why I got to go to Jesse's house? He said, because, Lord God, he says, right now, I'm giving you a new king in Israel. He said, but I'm trying to birth out the king of kings. And the Lord of lords. And if you don't go to Jesse's house, you can't get Jesus. So you got to go to Jesse's house. Lord God, because Sheila is in Jesse. Maybe I should have preached the message that Jesus is in Jesse. How do I know? Because Jesse, glory to God, we got David and David and Bathsheba, we got Solomon. And Solomon was the wisest man on the east side. And I the Lord, here comes Jesus. Walking through the volume of the book to do thy will. And I gotta go for I mess myself up. He says to them, go to Jesse. Amen. Go to Jesse's house. And when they went to Jesse's house, oh, Jesse said, All right, Eliam, come here, son. Show off your biceps and triceps. Let them see who you are. But God looks at him and he stays. He says, He looks good. Okay, so before I can get there, let me let me tell you how God corrected the man of God. As soon as Eliab came out, glory to God, the man of God had even messed up. He said, surely this is the one. And God immediately spoke and said, wait a minute, bro. He said, he said don't look at how good he looks. Don't look at his stature. Don't look at his countenance. He said, because that's what man does. He said, I need you to be a leader that sees as I see. God said, if you're going to lead something, you can't lead something in your own eyesight. God said, you got to lead them as God would lead them. Amen. And so he says to them, I want you to catch this because this was good stuff when God gave it to me. I want you to listen. He says, he says don't look at their countenance because man look at the outward appearance, but God looking at the heart. This is what God is saying. If you don't get nothing else, you get the point earlier and get this one too, okay? He says to them, he says, he got the outside. He has the look. Yeah. He has the countenance. Uh -huh. But he doesn't have the heart for it. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Now I understand what God meant when he told Jeremiah, I'll give you pastors after my own heart. He said, because you gotta have a heart of a leader to lead people. Come on. He said, you gotta have a heart of a servant to serve people. You gotta have a heart of a worship leader to work. God said, God said, stop forcing people to do this and that in ministry because the reason they don't want to do it is they don't have the heart for it. This is why we have to make so many corrections in the church because so many people are in position, but they're not in heart. And so God said, I see your heart. I see that you don't want to serve. I see that the only reason you do praise and worship because nobody else would do it, but you don't have the heart to lead my people in work. That's why they're looking at you crazy. That's why they're looking at you like you're not taking them anywhere because you don't have the heart. Jesus. Hey, oh my this might be too heavy for Sunday, y'all. We might. He says, he says, they don't have the heart for what I'm calling. He said, I'm calling for a new king. Mm -hmm. 
but they don't have the heart for it. But when David walks in, God says, surely this is the one. But notice he never, in, the, in that particular text, in chapter 16, he never mentions David's heart. Heart. It's not until later that we find out that David was a man after God. I'm trying to tell you how the Bible comes together, y'all. I'm trying to show you what God has said. God said, God said, he's a man after God's own heart. In other words, he said his heart is chasing after my heart. How do I know that David's heart chased after God's heart? Well, when David committed adultery with Bathsheba and he wrote Psalm 51, verse 10, what did he say? Created me a clean heart. He said, created me a clean heart. He said, he said because obviously something has not got in my flesh. It got in my heart. And I got to get it out of my heart so that my flesh will act right. I got to get it out of my heart. He said, catch this, creating me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. We, that's, usually the, that's usually the only verse that people quote out of Psalm 51. Yeah. <laughs> the verse that really blesses me, the verse that really blesses me is when he said, cast me not away from thy presence. Amen. He, said, he said, I know sin I told you I was lost. He said, I know sin creates a separation. Sin creates a divide. Sin will keep me out of your presence. But Lord, if you got anything to do with it, don't you throw me out. I know I stepped out. And I know I made the sin I shouldn't have. But don't cast me away from thy presence. Yes. But then this is the last thing I promise I'm done. He said, cast me not away from my presence and don't take your spirit. Oh, spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Now, I understand what he meant. He said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Because when you sin, see, look, can I get a right here? When you get convicted, yes, that is a push yes. from the spirit. Yes. The, the feelings of conviction that you have are the spirit's grievances. Yes. You have done something wrong, you feel bad, but God said, I don't care about you feeling bad because my spirit feels bad too. Yes. This is why conviction never goes no. away. Because he said, as long as you make my spirit feel bad, I'll make you feel bad until you get in right standing with me. Hallelujah. He says, create me a clean heart, renew me a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence, and don't take your spirit from me. He's, he's pleading with God. He says, he says, God, the only way, he said, I believe you can clean my heart, but the only way my heart is going to stay clean is if your spirit stays in my heart. He said, he said the only way, the only way my heart will stay pure is if the pure spirit stays in my heart. He said, if I get rid of the pure spirit in my heart, then the devil can get in my heart again. He said, the Lord, what I need you to do, don't Take your spirit. Don't take your anointing off of my mind. Don't take your anointing off my heart. Don't take your anointing off my spirit. Lord, don't throw me away. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I said I was done, but this is something else. Thank you, God. Preach. He said, Restore unto me the joy. Of your salvation. Yes. He said, once you get me back together, don't oh, leave me with the feelings I had when I came. He said, but restore me. Restore who I am. Restore my call. Restore my anointing. Restore my position in you. Now I understand um, this little grandma moment when she said, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, worn, and sick, but I found in him a resting place. Uh -huh. hey! And 
Why he has made me glad. I understand now what they did when he said he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, what joy. That blood, something happened. Don't know what it was. Don't know when it happened. Don't know why it occurred. But something happened. I'm looking thank you. at the heart. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus. God says, I'm looking at the heart. Note here, he says, your natural heart pumps blood yes. through your body. Yes. But your spiritual heart pumps blood yes. that was drawn from Emmanuel's body yes. through yes. your spirit. Yes. And God says, yes. God says, anytime your heart goes out, mm -hmm. your body will too. Yes. So God says, if you allow your spiritual heart to stop pumping, uh -huh. you can expect your ministry to fail, right, right. your life to fail, yes. your relationships to fail. Yes. Everything is going to fail yes. because God says, I don't pump it through your praise. I don't pump your nourishment, glory to God, through your clapping. Uh -huh. I don't pump your nourishment yes, through your God. worship. God said, I pump what you need through your heart. heart. Yes, God. So God says, when I tell you to worship me in spirit and in truth, I'm asking you to worship me from your heart. Amen. Because if you worship me from your heart, I'll go in. Mm -hmm. Take out your stony heart. Yes. And give you a heart like that. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, <laughs> Come on, speak to the Lord. 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 Speak to the Lord.
shall serve God. Only the pure heart shall see your face. So, Father, our hearts are what matters. Come into our hearts. Cleanse our hearts. Created us a clean heart. Clean heart. We want clean motives, but we got to have a clean heart. We want clean worship, but we got to have a clean heart. We want clean. We want a clean posture, a clean stance, but we got to have a clean heart. So, Father, speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, give us a message of love to encourage us. We love you this day. We pray to you and glorify you. Creating us a clean heart. Renewing us a right spirit. In Jesus' name. Someone say amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. Come on, praise him like you love him. Come on, praise him like you love him. Hallelujah. Prepare your hearts at this time to get to the Lord. And maybe the Lord is speaking to somebody today who is unsaved. And you say, I want to give my life to the Lord. I, I, I want to be saved. God said, I can speak to your heart today. Then you may say, no, I'm not already saved, but I feel short of all the way. Would you give, would you rededicate your heart? You don't have to come to the altar. All you got to do is confess your faults. The Bible says he is faithful and he is just. I'm so glad that he was faithful and just to me. Because when I messed up and went back to God, what did he do? He cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. He put me back on a path called straight. If that's you today, rededicate your life to the Lord. Pray a simple prayer right at your seat. Say, Lord, I messed up and I sinned. But Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sin. I turn from my wicked ways. And Father, I know that you have forgiven me today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Come on, one more time. Give your, give your God praise for his word. Hallelujah. Oh. Glory to God. Amen. Prepare your hearts at this time to give to the Lord. The school is coming. Amen. That we might serve the Lord through our giving. Amen. 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 If you would stand with that offering in your hand. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for these I gifts. You gave us the power to gain increase. And we thank you for that this day. We pray now, God, that you would bless the giver. Bless the offer that it might be used for the upkeep of your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. We're going to start from my right, your left. Amen. We're going to start from the rear, come around. Amen. Then we'll get the left hand side in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the minister to yourself that it's going to get better. Listen to these words. People come. People come. People go. People go. People go. Your life is in your hands. Your life is in your hands. Out of control. Out of control. You're confused. You're confused. You're confused. You're confused. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry.